Good morning. Good morning. So happy to see each and every one of you. You look amazing. Yes? yes. Yeah, it's so beautiful from this side. I'm knowing you're seeing the same light. Yes? yes. Yeah. So a friend of mine shared with me recently, um, she's actually a congregate from, an, from another church, and she struggles in relationships. And so she says to me, you know, I'm trying to make friends outside of Facebook. <laughs> and so I'm going to use the same principles. And uh, she says, every day I walk down the street and I tell everyone what I've eaten for the day and um, how I feel at any given moment and what I've done the night before and what I might do later with, with anyone. And then I give them pictures of my family, I give them pictures of my dog, and me gardening, and taking things apart in the garage, and sort of watering the lawn, and just everyday events. And I also listen to their conversations, I give them a thumbs up, and then I tell them I like them. And it works, just like Facebook. I already have four people following me. The police, a private investigator, and a psychiatrist. <laughs> it's just so funny how that Facebook thing is. But I do, I do enjoy my time on Facebook. Any of you love to do that? Probably nobody, but... It's sort of my time to get away from everything that's so serious. <laughs> and I mean, all my friends are so wonderful on Facebook. There's just, there's no arguing there, you know. <laughs> and, and I can't hear them yelling on Facebook. <laughs> so that's even more wonderful. But I did see something that just struck me as funny as well. And those are those church signs. Remember the old-fashioned church signs that we used to have, you know, in front of the church where I was growing up in Southern Baptist? There was always this sign, and every week it would say something different. And I found some really wonderful ones. It says, frog parking only, all others will be towed away. <laughs> I want to grow my own food, but I can't find the bacon seeds. <laughs> I checked into the Hokey Pokey Clinic, and I really turned myself around. <laughs> and this one I love. My wife said I never listened to her, or something like that. <laughs> and the last one is, what happens if you get scared half to death twice? <laughs> OK, talk is over with. We have found the joy that we are seeking in the world. Yes. yes. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I, I played that video of Just Get Happy? Yes? Some of you are here. and So that's one way to do it, is to look for the humor in between the seriousness, because I don't know about you, every now and then it gets a little too serious, you know, of really wanting, let's just lighten it up just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. My beautiful brother here, Thomas, who was a pediatrician, he always looks so joyful and happy. And he says, you know, it's not life or death here. <laughs> so it's like, it's in perspective. Yeah. So we're going to continue this uh, series of basic teachings of unity. I want to thank Reverend Johanna, who did a great job last week. talking about um, the second principle. So the first principle was there's only one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life, the infinite living, loving presence of God. Now, normally we say that every Sunday as our statement of faith. So one presence, one power. That's our number one principle. And our number two principle is um, our essence is of God, therefore we are inherently good. This God called essence is the Christ. And this Christ was fully expressed in Jesus. And that spark of divinity, the Christ presence, is in you and me. Yes? Yes. yes. 
That's what we know, that everybody has that same spark. Everybody was born an original blessing, that we are imbued with this divine presence. Some of us hide it more than others. <laughs> right? It's like, wow, we need to just shine up your light just a little bit. Yeah. And that's what we come to church for. That's why we go to classes. That's why uh, we study and meditate and pray is to ignite that light. So that's our guiding force. So that has more attention than the world. Yes? yes. <laughs> and that takes a little bit of work to just consistently um, do that. So we have other teachings. And today we are talking about mindful co-creation. So our, th our third principle is we are co-creators with God and we create our reality through thoughts held in mind. Is that? Yeah. Way to go, Diana. She's on it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Always. She is. She just covers our rear ends all the time. Yeah. <laughs> thoughts held in mind. Uh, that's so true. I you know, was working with this principle this week, and of course, I get to learn what I'm teaching, right? So I'm being mindful of what I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm driving down the road, and I see this beautiful woman, and she's jogging, and as I get closer, I sort of noticed that her rear end is big. And my judgment is just like, wow, that's a big rear end. <laughs> so thoughts after, in my mind, produce after their kind, right? So... <laughs> we got to be careful what we're talking and saying, yes? Yes. So I let that one go. <laughs> Let's not be noticing the, 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 the little uh, twig in someone else's eye when I've got a log in my own, right? <laughs> so letting that go. So our third principle, and so what we're here to do is raise our sights. This is what we're here to do in, at Unity and, and any spiritual community, that um, we are co-creating with this one presence all of the time. Now, whether we're co-creating from our Christ itself or our shadow or a dark side, doesn't matter. The, the law is the same. <laughs> We are just co-creating. So it's important, wouldn't you say, to sort of be mindful of what we're creating. Yes? Yes. yes. So sort of say, you know, if I don't like what I'm seeing in my world, then I need to shift. Right? I need to shift. And um, sometimes that means you need to move or get a new job or get a new partner. But 99% of the time, what is it? It's me, right, it's me. I need to, you know, take a look at what I am focusing my attention on. <laughs> right? What am, I, what am I giving my energy to? So this week, we're also looking at the, um, the 64 days. Does anybody have one of the, the uh, Season of Peace and Nonviolence brochures? Would you... Elaine, you're here. Oh my gosh. We are so happy to have you. I didn't know you were out there. So um, Elaine's been with you all for many, many years and I had the privilege of knowing her for the first few months I was here. So she's back, I'm guessing, visiting. So we are entering into a season of peace and nonviolence, and this is a time to celebrate the teachings of Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. And these are 64 days, so it starts January 3rd, uh, goes through April 4th, and these are the, are the commemorative times of these two giant people, spiritual teachers, of uh, being the presence of peace in the world. And so I want to share this with you. It's 23 years, I believe, that some of us have been practicing the season of peace and nonviolence. So these are uh, beautiful teachings. Uh, there's 
principles, I'll, I won't read them all, but the joint principles say, nonviolence means honoring the dignity and inherent worth of every human being. And it goes on to say, nonviolence is courageously chosen, choosing to practice compassion with our apparent adversaries, our enemies. We oppose injustice, not people. Nonviolence means recognizing love as the power of the human spirit to triumph over injustice, social inequity, suffering. This is the hero's journey. Yes? yes. So if you'll join me, we have these available, uh, a few of them back there, but many more at the Connection Central. And it starts January 30th, runs through April 4th. So January 30th, the first one is uh, by Eleanor Roosevelt. And so these are affirmations and then actions. Our fifth prin principle in unity is it's not enough to know these teachings. We got to take action. We have to embody them so that we know what they are. So Eleanor Roosevelt urged us, she said, you must do the things you think you cannot do. It's courage. We need to be courageous to do what is ours to do, yes? Yes. I know that um, you're all here on this hero's journey with me. <laughs> but it's not always easy, is it, to be present in love and um, to stand in principle when things feel like it's against me or against us or against our ideals or ideals. But these teachings are true <laughs> regardless of who is standing in front of us, yes? Yes. yes. So uh, these are the, the, the bigger ideals. So Gandhi always treated his opponents as partners. That his enemies soon became his biggest supporters just, uh, just by his nonviolent principles, just from his presence. He was able to warm their hearts to hear differently, even though they were on opposite sides of the issue. He was able to be present in love, to hear what his brother or sister needed to say, and then to offer his honesty, yes? But we first have to create a safe place. We first have to put the swords down, <laughs> open the heart, yes? Yes, and create space for that listening. And that's what he came to teach us. Nonviolence is courageously choosing to practice compassion. So I invite you to join us in the 64 days as we journey into this beautiful season. It is sponsored by Agent, the Association of Global New Thought. And on our website, you can go, and every day uh, there's a, a mandala, and every day it changes. So if you don't like paper, you can actually go to our website and look at our mandala for 64 days and practice along with us. Yes, you online, so there's, uh, there's always a way to be engaged. So under these spiritual laws, and the, the law is the law of attraction we're talking about for this uh, third principle, our every story is attracting its vibrational match. Yes? Our story, whatever we are describing as our world, as our life, that is attracting its equivalent vibration. So if we don't like what we're seeing, we need to raise our vibration, right? Yes. So rather than going around and moving all the chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> That's such a great saying, isn't it? Because it's going down regardless, right? <laughs> I don't care how beautiful you make those chairs. <laughs> it's not hanging around, right? So we could keep changing it up. But really, we need to let go of most of our stories, yes? My slogan is let go of the story, get on with the glory. Yes? Yeah. 
Because that sad, sad story you've been telling keeps attracting another sad, sad story. And I don't mean that we don't need empathy and compassion. We do. There's been some horrendous things that have happened to us. But just how long do we want to tell that story? How long do we want to identify as that? And so we get to choose. This is the, the law of attraction, that we are vibrating at a frequency level. And those frequencies are determined by the feelings and the thoughts that we hold in our mind. Thoughts held in mind, produced after their kind. Yes? yes. We know those little slogans. But we just think that we're living in this dream, that dream you know, the, the illusion or the nightmare that you created. Oh, couldn't have been me. I'm sure I didn't create this. What are you thinking about? <laughs> yeah. So thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And so if, if we are mistrusting, resentful, suspicious, and fearful, look around how you have tr attracted all those people that are also fearful, resentful, mistrusting, and suspicious. Yes? Yeah. yeah. So when we want to change the field, we have to be the change we wish to see. Yes. We want to tell a different story to bring a different result. And our story is that we are here for a divine purpose. That there is something so magnificent that wants to be expressed through you each and every one of you. And that we are just here to get on with bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. Yes? yes. Let's let it go. Let God be God in you. Yes? yes. Let God be God in me. And let me not uh, adhere to that same story that I'm a victim of life circumstance once again. We're going to clean it up and start new and call in what it is we wish to create. Yes? yes? So we have this beautiful sea turtle. It just appears, see, when I speak the word, it just... It's so amazing how this law of attraction is. How it just happens. Shows up. So down at our uh, um, Connection Central, you can add your word. You know, these are words that uh, many of us have decided that this is the community that we want to build and create. And so uh, look at this beautiful um, list. And uh, find one that uh, you want to embody, be the change you wish to seek in the community, be the change you wish to see in your own world. This is what we're about. And then there's, there's sheets down at Connection Central. If you don't see your word, that you get to add it. We'll add it onto there. So it's an evolving, living, and breathing document. This beautiful sea turtle symbolizes patience, wisdom, endurance. This is what we're about, the beloved com community, of building something that matters. Yeah, building who we have come here to be. So all of you that have done the Q work, you know, on your Q card, that should be an expression here, yes? That's who you've come here to be. That's what we call your Christ itself, your most noble self, your most amazing, beautiful being. And we have a, want to create a field, an environment in which you feel safe to express that part of yourself. But also your shadow self. Now, if you are in your shadow self, we might be as loving as we can, but we're going to put some boundaries on that. Yes? yes. Yeah. We're not going to just let you act out. Right? We might, you know, put you in a timeout or <laughs> love you up a little bit and, you know, remind you of who you are, bring you into the fold because we all want to belong. Yes? yes. We all want to belong. And that's Jesus' teachings was inclusivity. But we have to behave or act in a certain way that is conducive to creating this beautiful environment. 
So that's our work, is attracting like-minded individuals who want to co-create something beautiful and amazing. Yes? Yes. yes. And, and if they don't, you know, then, then maybe you don't want to play here. That's all. That's all. And if we live at that vibration, anything lower than that will simply disappear. Yes? yes? That's what will happen. So whose job is it then to co-create this community? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is us practicing the law of mind action. Yeah. This is us doing that. And what I know about you is you are amazingly creative, courageous beings. I've seen that. Beautiful. That we are mindful co-creations. And what I know too is that if, if there's a little bit of fear in you about what's happening next in your life or here or whatever, is I know that you will be whatever tomorrow demands. Yes? yes? You will be whatever is necessary to maintain and co-create the kingdom of heaven here on earth. It's the law. As long as we stay at that level of who and what we've come here to be. That's what I know about you. Is that there's a huge capacity to do that. And there's a field just waiting for you to plant your own seeds. The Course of Miracles says, seek not to change the world, but choose to change your mind about the world. And as soon as you change your mind about the world, that it is a peaceful place and that it is a friendly place supporting me, right? That I attract to myself all these people that want my gifts. And pretty soon they all show up. Pretty soon our, our world is out picturing the way our mind is producing. So perception is a result, not a cause. Our perception is a result. You will see the witness to the choice you made and learn from this to recognize which one you choose, the light or the dark. The world you see but shows you how much joy you have allowed yourself to see and accept as yours. Yes? Yes. yes. The power to give it joy must be in you. It doesn't come from outside of us. This kingdom of heaven, this peaceful place, will not get created until you and I get that we're the ones. Yes? yes. This is us. We are co-creating this community together. So Jesus said, pray believing you have already received it and it will be yours. Pray believing it's already there. Whatever it is that you're wanting, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes? yes? Seek ye first the consciousness in which to take hold of all that you want to receive God's richest blessings. But first we have to have the consciousness in which to receive it. The Q process can help you there to be a great receiver. How many of you want to be a great receiver? Yes? We want to be great receivers. We want two mitts, right? <laughs> Catching God's good, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold two mitts, and they're just going to have Velcro all over them, right? It's gonna, God's good is just going to stick all over me. Yes? yes? Yeah. And everything unlike God is going to be Teflon all over my body. It's just going to fall away. It won't attach. It won't diminish me. This is our work. It's trusting and knowing that whatever is before us is for us. 
to awaken to our most glorious self. In the Bible, in Job 3.25, it says, What I have feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened. <laughs> you know, fear, doubt, and worry are actually a prayer request for what you don't want. Yes? Fear, doubt, and worry is a prayer request for what you don't want. So anytime you're in that fear, doubt, and worry, you need to sort of watch. Shift. Yes. Get down on your knees if you need to. Call a prayer chaplain. You know, whoa, I am forgetting who I am. I am moving out of trust and fear that God is a source of my good. I need a reminder. How many of you have prayer partners that you can do that with or friends? Yes. That's, that's building a community that will support you in those dark moments when we forget. And if you are in a human body, guess what? You're going to forget. Right? We can do a worksheet, right? We can do a worksheet and be so grounded and so remember who and what we are and then walk down the street and hear someone say something and get triggered in another moment, right? It's sort of the human journey. But it's not how many times we forget, but how quickly we remember where we don't stay in our suffering pity party. Yes? <laughs> that's that's because I'm done with the suffering. How many of you are sort of done with the suffering? Yeah, yeah. I, I know there's pain, but we don't have to suffer over it. So part of our, our world is sort of waking up to that. So, uh, I better finish this up. Okay. <laughs> Just having so much fun, you know. It's like, wow, all these great words are coming through. So, Abraham Hicks uh, is a beautiful teacher. And uh, she and uh, Esther and Jerry wrote many, many books. And Ask and It Will Be Given is one. But the next slide is Expect uh, Your Every Need to Be Met. And this is a beautiful idea of um, really... What Jesus' teachings, pray believing, you already have it, is expect. When you, when you want something or need something, expect your every need to be met. Expect the answer to every problem. It's not going to be hidden from you. Sometimes we think that way. Yeah, there's an answer. I don't know why it's being hidden from me. So expect to find the answer. Expect abundance at every level. Expect to grow spiritually. You are not living by human laws. Yes? We are spiritual beings having a human journey. Not a human being occasionally having a spiritual moment. We are spiritual beings made in the image and likeness of God. That's who we are. And the last thing I want to leave you with are these beautiful quotes. Remember, we talked about just getting in a vibration that feels good, however that works for you. So these are, I call them the espresso moments. Anybody like coffee? Come on. Good. There's uh, some addicts, you know, out there. We just go from one to the other. We try to make it not as harmful as the last, right? So espresso moments. So Oprah Winfrey Passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. Yes? yes? Feel the passion of focusing on what excites you. And then my mission in life, from Maya, who my favorite being, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive. And to do so with passion, compassion, humor, and style. Amen. And then Steve Jobs, Jobs, I always do the opposite. Steve Jobs, just like it looks, Denise, don't make it harder than it is. Okay, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, God, whatever. This approach has never let me down, and it has made all the difference 
in my life. We have to trust, yes? That something greater is at play in our lives. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, the heaven of all is well. Yes? God bless you. Thank you so much.